Welcome everybody to the Three Way Podcast Show. Yo. My name is Los, your host with the most on the hoes and on the toes, and it won't. I don't pose, and I suppose uh, <laughs> Public Enemy Fifty Nine, and behind the magic of, of it all, ruler of the universe, Eli, aka JRX Jerks. What's up? All right, uh, we got a lot of news today. Finally, it's picking up, <laughs> man. A lot of stuff's coming up. It's the beginning, twenty twenty, new year, new me. New toys. Ooh. I saw that at a at a at a at a video store. You know those twenty four hour video stores, and on their sign, you know what I'm talking about, right? No. The sex shops, the sex stores. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're like New Year, New You, New Toys. But okay. <laughs> that's good. How many did you buy? Uh, just one. All right. Um. All right. So, fuck it. Let's go. Uh, we are gonna start off with pop culture. Pop. Pop. New Mutants <laughs> trailer just came out. We knew Fox was working on a New M- Mutants movie. And it seems okay. They got bought out by Disney. Uh, you know, so now, you know, X-Men's back in the hands of Marvel. And it looks like, okay, Marvel kind of went ahead and edited it to their liking. and But they're still releasing this movie. So we got New Mutants coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the trailer. It has a lot of actors I really like. It has the girl from uh, 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 Throne Game of Thrones. Throne it of has Games. the guy from Stranger Things. Uh, a lot of people I like. Uh, and, you know, so this is now canon, I assume, in the Marvel Universe? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I was watching... I mean, this is the second trailer we get for this movie. I think the first one was a little bit like more of a teaser if I, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly I didn't yeah. go back and watch it but this one does show a lot more of the characters that are going to be in this uh, movie it does give more of the the idea of what the plot is um, I don't know I'm not really too excited for it this is one of those mo- type of movies that's had like several several reshoots and yeah it's been reworked like a shit ton of times and usually when shit like that happens it doesn't bode well for the movie I don't so know. look at Venom Venom wasn't all that Venom either. Venom was solid. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this movie, uh, it, it trailer, it makes it look interesting. It's supposed to be like kind of like a th- uh, thriller or a psychological thing. Uh, it's like we're, we're probably gonna have like flashbacks of these people, like as they uh, first like discover their powers and whatnot. And you know, this isn't canon because uh, when they put the romance for twenty twenty, this is not one of the movies in there yeah but i wouldn't be surprised if they somehow work it in Mm -hmm. right because they want to get their you know their x-men stuff kind of involved in the in the in the universe so who knows you know stay after the the credits we might see (laughs) you know well the movie comes out april 3rd um what what's coming out april i don't know if it's something big around there, I don't know. Usually, I, I just found this out like not too long ago. Like, if if a studio doesn't believe the movie's gonna do anything for them, they'll just dump it out in January. Mm-hmm. So this month is like really bad for films. Apparently, I had no idea. All right. Well, actually, I need to go watch that 1918. What's that? Oh that? yeah, I need to watch I'm that one go too. Watch that I heard it's really good. Um. All right. Uh, CES has uh. Come and gone, right? It, it was this uh, past weekend. Uh, yeah, I think today's the last day for it. Oh, okay. So CES 2020 uh, commenced, uh, and some cool information coming out of there. Uh, not, I mean, uh, PlayStation revealed their new PS5 logo, which, okay, yeah. looks just like the PlayStation 4. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so whatever. But what I did really like is uh, Dell. Mm-hmm. Uh, went ahead and, and, and released a concept. So this is a concept. There's no production going on. It's not necessarily a uh, confirmation of a release. It's kind mm-hmm. of something they said, oh, we, we, we've been working on this, and it's an idea, right? Um, so they released a, a concept of th- this alien, uh, that's the brand, alien, uh, handheld, basically PC, it oh, looks like a damn switch. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, so has the 
joy cons that come off of this side you can uh put it in uh and, you know, stand it up, play with, uh, you, you attach the controllers to another thing so you can play. Yeah, basically, um, a, 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 yeah, a switch, but that Dell uh, is doing through their alien brand. Uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, that's right. I have the video up right now on the YouTube side. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little bit bigger than the switch is. It, it looks like, like the controllers are a little bit more comfortable as well, but it's basically just a com uh, uh, a computer that's like handheld, uh, yeah. basically in the form of How a switch. How is that not like a copyright infringement? You're taking. I mean, yeah, but the switch it's in itself it's not like an original idea either. Like, there's been other things that are like it. I mean, you can actually even say like phones are like it because huh? they've been making controls like for yeah, their phones. Yeah, but the detachable the controllers, that's, that's where, okay, uh, handheld video game system, whatever. I mean, they can but make. But the detachable controllers, they can like, make that's their own where I'm like. No, I know. They okay, can, you're, you're, whatever. They're making their own design. Maybe I'm wrong. Their, their own design of it. Like they can design it, but they just can't take the way like the mechanics work for the joy cons to connect they just can't take that like you know and just copy and paste it i don't know uh i'll go ahead and study copyright infringement law <laughs> this upcoming week i'll be back with you guys uh what else do we have coming out of ces uh we have like a giant ass mother loving monitor that's like ultra ultra curved <gasps> It's like a 49-inch Samsung. It's called the Samsung Odyssey G9. This is what you're hyped about, huh? Bro. <laughs> like, it's a it's a monster. It's so super-duper wide. It's it's like, I think, if it's like two 27-inch monitors, if it were like side-by-side, side, it's really like ginormous. And one of the other things they also had here was uh, a TV that uh, goes from flat to curved. So... Like you get to choose what, how you want to do it. Yeah. What? Yeah. So hold on. Are you in on this curve stuff? Like, if I'm a if I'm a PC guy, if I'm a streamer, mm -hmm. does this curve TV screen is that like worth it? Is it cool? Is it or just buy three TVs and curve nah. it myself? I mean, no. The 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 curve thing is just more or less of a fat thing. Like, like it's the it's what's gonna get you to pay attention to it. But, I mean, if I had a choice, I mean, honestly, if I had the money, because those curved monitors are actually pretty expensive. Oh, okay. But if I had the money, I probably wouldn't get them. You I don't wouldn't. know. No. Okay. I don't think so. All right. That's all we have for CES? Oh, man. No, there was like uh, the little computer that's like, it looks like a little module. It's super compact. It's like fits in your hand. It's like powerful. I don't know. It's just like a bunch of concept stuff. Like they showed off like uh, an AK TV that's like uh, bezel-less. Uh, they, they showed off some item here. I'm gonna put it on the YouTube side again. That looks like, uh, some kind of like uh, futuristic, uh, dildo and or like pleasuring device. But basically I think it's like a massager. What? I don't know. But anyways. what, what, when can I buy this? It's the future, man. What? The future of masturbation. Yeah. Sony, <laughs> Sony unveiled like a, a car as well. Oh but, yeah. They're electric car. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw that. Very interesting. Sony going into electric cars. Mm -hmm. What? This future. is what this company is working on? That's the future. That's crazy. <laughs> that, that to me was like shocking. Like, yeah. You're just going into a whole new space. Never had any experience in, in it. And you're going on the electric side of it. Like, whoa. I, I thought that was cool. <laughs> Man, I might. I mean, if I have a, if I could connect my PS Five onto this electric car and it self drives and I could play games, bro, it's a done deal. All right. Well, speaking of I'm space, going in. uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, uh of space, uh, <laughs> what? Uh, uh, so these planetariums, uh, telescopes around the world have worked in conjunction to track. A radio signal coming from space. What? It's called a FRB. A fast radio burst have been detected coming from space. I'm scared. Now, what does this mean? I'm afraid. People have speculated it could be 
like a black hole emitting this radio signal? I don't get it. They call it radio signal. How can a radio signal come from a, a black hole? But I'm not a freaking... Because of the wave. I'm not a... Yeah, I'm not a freaking scientist, so whatever. But it ranges from theories going from black holes to, you know, life out there. You know, extraterrestrial being send, sending this these radio signals so uh it's astronomers man like I'm, I'm ready for the aliens man <laughs> i mean astronomers are still not able to find out exactly what it is it's like it coming from a galaxy that's actually pretty close from previous frbs that were detected so they're trying to hone in on this galaxy and try to find out where it's coming from uh but yeah uh aliens man it's, we're 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 almost well. They they've already been abducting us and testing our cows for for decades now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so it's just a matter of time before we come into close contact. I believe Trump uh, has already, you know, when he got elected, he got the document showing him that aliens are real and the whole Ross thing. So uh, yeah, man, it's just a matter <laughs> of time. <laughs> All right then. Well, yeah. aliens, man. To our new uh, saviors. You know, I always used to uh, be fascinated when I was younger by space and aliens. But, man, every time I would watch, like, a documentary, a movie about it, mm-hmm. I, I can't sleep, bro. You, you know what movie out. did that to me? It was The Fourth Kind. Bro, The that Fourth one, Kind that one fucked me up. tripped me the hell out. <laughs> but you know what? They say that they, they got a whatever. It's not. I don't think it's true that. Oh, no. Actually, yeah. They said uh, they put it in conjunction with the real videotapes. But that, that case. That was bullshit, too. Now, in that case, I think that what they were really dealing with was just like demonic possession because that was like someone what being possessed and they attributed it to <laughs> to aliens. But that's that's my that's what I think. I think that whole oh, it was a, a abduction thing going on. No, that was just some bitch being like it could also be just psychological shit, shit too. Like, Maybe. Yeah, that bitch. I'm, you saw her doing the interview. Was that yes, her? I did see it. At but the end, where she's it, talking about, uh, it's all fake though. Like even even the. Hey, the, but you got freaked out though. Hey, dude, it got me. Got me too. <laughs> all right, uh, we're gonna go move on to sports. <sighs> Touchdown! It's a home run. Go sports. Sports. Space sports. All right. Sports. Mike McCarthy. Finally, the best head coach available. The safest. Safest, no. The safest pick. No, the, he's the best coach available out he's there the right now. He's the safest pick. Got hired by the Cowboys. The Cowboys managed to get their new, themselves a new coach. Mr. Clap is finally gone. I think, he, I think he's going to New York, isn't he? Like, he's been. Uh, I don't know. He's getting interviewed for, like, a uh, yeah, offensive sure. coordinator. Make another team shit. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, Mr. Clap is gone. Coach Clap. Uh, Coach Clap is gone. Mike McCarthy is now the new head coach for the Cowboys. I'm not a Cowboy hater. I'm not a Cowboy fan. Uh, so I will say this: great hire, great choice. By, finally, by Jerry Jones, finally made the the decision and cut his son from the <laughs> as head coach. I mean, basically, I mean, the love for him was really the only reason he was still around. Uh, but Mike McCarthy, what a get. This guy, Super Bowl champion, uh, knows how to build a, a decent team, knows how to coach a quarterback at least. Yeah. I'm not going to say, I mean, the Packers were all around just, eh, uh, but they won the Super Bowl. So what, what else can I say? Um, but yeah, man, I think it's a great hire by the Cowboys, a great get by Jerry Jones. I think this invigorates. Not only uh, the fan base, but the actual players. I heard there was actual actually some player that texted. Uh, what's Coach Clapp's name? I don't even know his name, man. Uh, Jason Garrett. J- Jason Garrett texted him and said, "Fuck you." <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I know. I know that Des Bryant said something on Twitter. Exactly. Who was? Who he stated like, I can assure you, the locker room is happy about this. So, um. Yeah, man, I think all around this is a good move for the Cowboys. They needed this to keep Coach Clapp around. Would have been, I think, ooh, it would have been detrimental to the team. Uh, but they have a solid squad that should be winning games. Yeah. Uh, a, a all-star offense. They have a solid defense. 
So they should be winning games. They should be competing in the playoffs. Uh, and I feel like Mike McCarthy gets them one step closer to that. Uh, and I feel like uh, Prescott is actually going to might improve under Mike McCarthy's offense because this guy's really good uh, offensively. Um, he knows how to how to run an offense. So yeah. uh, they also let go of the OC, the offensive coordinator. I forget his name. He was a oh, well, I coach. would imagine they have to get rid of like the whole coaching staff because this is the one that Jason well, Barrett hired. Yeah, no? but as of right now, they're still holding on to that other young guy. The who? Yeah, this is another young head coach. I forget his name, but they haven't fired everybody. Oh, okay. So well, it's uh, up to the coach, anyways. He's in a yeah. It's up to Mike. Yeah. So we'll see if Mike. Uh, we'll yeah. see. Uh, I think this is a good step for the Cowboys. So uh, and yeah, I feel I might, like I might come back to start watching football again. Yeah, and it's a good <laughs> step for Dak Prescott. So uh, all around, I think this is a good move. Uh, they interviewed uh, Marvin Lewis. Oh really? <laughs> which uh, don't get Marvin Lewis. And you know what? I've hated a lot of Marvin Lewis throughout the years. But seeing how the Cincinnati Bengals played this year just shows how much of a uh, – He was holding that team, team up. up. Yeah. Because they were like a, a almost winless season this year. I think they only won like one or two, right? And this is practically the same team Marvin Lewis has taken to the playoffs consecutive years. So, right. Uh, it just kind of seems like, man, maybe Marvin Lewis was doing a freaking crazy good job with this – he made this team overperform. What happened to their squad? Where, where's uh, was it AJ Green and uh, Red Rocket? They're all there, man. They're it, still there. Yeah, they're, they're there. <laughs> Red Rocket got benched. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah. It's just all around bad for. <clears throat> and they thought they were finally getting rid of the problem. I thought they were getting rid of the problem. Nope. The problem, I guess, was the GM and the whole team. But uh, whatever. Damn. Uh. <laughs> Marvin Lewis was the thing saving that team. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so XFL, Woo! right? We're talking about the NFL, all but the XFL right. is in the midst of 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 kicking off. This they is kick what off truly is coming. February, bringing me back to football. Uh, February eighth starts the and re inaugurals <laughs> season because XFL has been around before. Yeah, and uh, catch this, we might actually. Uh, be covering, uh, maybe do a video on the XFL. Who knows? I'm down. So February 8th, the XFL starts up again. Uh, Houston does have a team. Uh, I think there's the only, Roughnecks. The Roughnecks. There's only eight teams right now. Um, it starts February 8th. I think we're probably going to go that day. I want to go. The t- t- tickets are cheap, man. We, we need to go. All right. We need to yeah, go. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. Uh, but this week we actually got some information. They're talking about the rule set. Yeah. Oh and my so, god, the rule set. <laughs> okay, so obviously the XFL, the Extreme Football League, wants to go extreme, man. They don't want regular lame ass NFL rules. You know, they don't they don't want that shit. Kickers, they don't they hate kickers in the XFL. So new rules, and I'm kind of like I want to put this out there. Let me know what you guys think. Um. The, there's going to be no kicks after touchdowns. So once you get a touchdown, there's no option to get an extra point kick. You have three options. And they all involve putting your offensive squad out there and trying to get into the end zone. If you do a, a, if you run a play from the two-yard line, you get one point. If you run a play from the five-yard line, you get two points. And if you run a play from the 10-yard line, you get three points. You, you have to choose one of these three options, mm. right? So if you want your regular one point after the touchdown, after the six points, you got to run a play from the two-yard line. You got to run the ball in or whatever. Wait, so do they not have like a goal post? Like it's they just, do. They do. So what the fuck is in case for you there? don't score a touchdown, you do have the option of kicking a field goal. Right? Wait, what? Look, let's say you get stopped at the 20. You could kick a field goal, get your three oh, points. Oh, okay, okay. But if you score a touchdown, um, you have the you don't have an option to kick an extra point. You have to do one, uh, one, three, or five, or ten, yeah, whatever. Yeah, one, two, or five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two, yeah. Two, five, ten. Yeah, two, five, ten yards. Two, five, ten. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty freaking interesting. It makes every touchdown interesting. That's, so, you don't do just a, a lame-ass kick. No. Extreme Football League wants to go extreme. You got to <laughs> run a play, right? Yeah. Another cool rule change. Um, uh, what was it? The, 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 the overtime, mm. right? So instead of each team getting the ball and having to march down the field, lame, boring, no. 
Each squad gets five rounds to to score on uh, to go into their to go in the red zone and score a touchdown. You get one play, five rounds. So I get the ball, I try to score, boom, I score one point. The other team goes. So you best out of five, right? So whoever gets the most points on these five rounds wins the game. There's never a tie because if you're tied after the five rounds. Oh, so you're like right at the the, the red zone. Yes, I believe you start yeah. like at the. Yeah, I, I'm looking at this video. They, they explain it. Yeah, so you start at the red zone and like you, it's it's basically it looks like kind of like uh, the soccer penalty kicks. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Exactly, except football. So you're running one play to try to score. Whoever mm. gets the most points. Actually, now that I'm seeing this, damn, they're taking a lot of rules from fucking soccer. Like we were, we were talking about how the time doesn't stop for anything. Uh, they, I mean, they said they wanted to do that too because they wanted to like you know speed up the the game. They yeah, don't want yeah, like yeah. like timeouts, whatever. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I'm pretty sure eventually they're gonna have to bring that back because of like TV timeouts and whatnot. That's the thing. They don't care about TV timeouts. Oh, a lot of things are doing. Money comes in. Yeah, they, <laughs> they don't. They're. They're doing a lot of things that are meant for TV. Like the NFL does a lot of rules that are meant, meant for, for TV. TV. Yeah. They're kind of doing away with a lot of this stuff, right? Um, that's the whole point of the the uh, even their kickoff is base is meant to like speed up the game, like you said, and avoid timeouts, avoid commercials. So yeah, mm. I mean, eh, I'm pretty. Eh, Damn, the they, NFL they, could probably they adopt have, some of these rules. They have a 25 second play clock, and the NFL has 40 seconds. Correct. Fuck. Yeah, so games are gonna go quick. That's man. fast. Dude. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, let's go. I'm ready to go the first game. Hey. <laughs> <coughs> I'm ready to be a rough neck. Yeah, screw it. Let's buy some jerseys too, man. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> what are they like five dollars? Yeah, probably. Uh, made <laughs> made in India. Um, who's uh, who's uh, who's our our quarterback? <laughs> I have no idea. I have bro. no idea either. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, all right, so the MLB arbitration deadline has kicked in. So basically, MLB has a weird ass rule, right? Uh, where young players who have a certain amount of time in the league. Don't really get to negotiate full contracts. They gotta be in the league for a certain amount of time to really negotiate a full like contract. So you you for these younger players that are just starting in the league, you go into arbitration. So you're kind of limited on how much you can make uh, because of arbitration. So that means players really don't get a full uh, deal until they're, they're like five years in or shit or something like that. I don't yeah. know the exact rule, but. So, arbitration deadline came up, meaning that all these young players had to sign contracts. If they don't, they go into, like, these hearings, arbitration hearings, which every team kind of wants to avoid arbitration hearings. But when they disagree on the contract, you go into arbitration hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's kind of a big deal because you get all these young players that get signed. You know, they get uh, one, two-year uh, uh, contracts. Uh, big news is Mookie Betts from the Red Sox got a huge deal, uh, broke the record that Arenado said last year. Um, he got, what was it? Uh, 27 million arbitration record. Um, we had, uh, um, LA that, that paid a crap load to Cody Bellinger, uh, 11.5 mil record for first time eligible arbitration, uh, they also got Corey Seager back, who's huge on their team. They got Enrique Hernandez back, 5.9 mil. So, L.A., you know, a bunch of their uh, young squad uh, in arbitration. They managed to sign most of them. But they got some going into hearing. Uh, Mac Mu Max Muncy, uh, Joe Peterson, uh, Pedro Baez. So, a lot of... A lot of players from L.A. that are still uncertain on uh, what those contracts are going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the Houston Astros managed to get Carlos Correa at a deal. I mean, I mean, I imagine because of all the injuries, only got eight mil. But they're going into arbitration hearing with uh, Corey Springer mm -hmm. uh, or Corey uh, George Springer. I'm tripping. Uh, George Springer. Uh, I imagine because this guy has been, uh, you know, MVP of the World Series. Has killed it in the playoffs. The guy wants more money. Uh, so, yeah, a um, couple of arbitration contracts are there. So, it's like 
the beginning of uh, the off season going there. Uh, so yeah, pretty pretty cool to see that. I mean, nothing really major change. Uh, all the big players are staying with their squads, other than uh, George Springer and some of the Dodgers there. Uh, Chris Bryant staying with the Chicago Cubs, eighteen point six. Javier Baez, Taylor Mill. Uh, so yeah, uh, the Cubs retaining most of their guys. Uh, Trevor Story going into hearing. Uh, yeah, but other than that, I mean, pretty pretty cool stuff, man. I'm glad that uh, a lot of these players are staying with their squads. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, good to see. But no yeah, that's all we got for sports, about. right? I hope so, because I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. <laughs> but XFL. 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 I'm ready for uh, that. Our last thing, last uh, topics of the the show. We're going into gaming. Pew, 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 pew. Game over. <laughs> um, big new, well, big rumors. Big rumors. So the uh, rumors have surfaced again that a Switch Pro model is slated to come out in 2020. Now, uh, there was an article given out, and it's picked up steam, saying that. It's a whole metal encasing that's going to be on this Switch Pro. Better chipset. No one knows exactly what that means. Nope. It's better CPU, better, I mean, better screen, better battery. No one knows. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that there's rumors supposedly that Nintendo is planning to come out with this Switch Pro model in 2020. You think it's going to have, like, 4K in it? No. But I think it will have good full 1080, right? Because a lot of the games that run on the the V2 model of the Switch, yeah, uh, still sometimes on handheld mode they can only hit 720. Right? Um, look, honestly, I don't have a Switch. I had a Switch for like a second, but uh, I wouldn't mind getting another one. I really, really want to play. Um, what's it called? Mario Maker? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, Mario Maker 2. Mm-hmm. Like I really want to play that. So I wouldn't mind getting a Switch eventually. Um, but w- this year marks the beginning of a new gen. Correct. We have PlayStation 5 coming out. Mm-hmm. We have Xbox Series X coming out. Mm-hmm. And then apparently now we have a new Alienware Switch, Switch, mm-hmm. e- Switch-like mm-hmm. game system coming out, whatever. Um, Nintendo, Nintendo doesn't need to do this. Nintendo can continue doing what their Nintendo does. Because honestly... At this point, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't see another version of the Switch coming out unless it's like Switch Two. You know what I mean? Like not just like an upgraded version. Yeah. No, I think I think you're wrong because, um, yes, Switch can continue to be successful as is. It'll continue to get all the indie games. Uh, they have their first party games. Mm-hmm. You know, they can continue without third party support, which. Surprisingly, the Switch has managed to get a lot of third-party support yeah. from companies that are making new, uh, you know, current-gen games and porting them over to the Switch because they see the, you know, the 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 base, uh, the player base is so huge, and it's it's a a lot of these games sell better on the Switch. Mm-hmm. My thing is, you have these new 4K systems coming out right at the end of this year. Mm-hmm. Now the rumor states that they're gonna go into production in the spring to sell in the summer. I I I don't know, man. I I think that's true because once these third party games start developing for the PS Five and the Xbox One Series X, Xbox Series X. You're right, Xbox Series X. <laughs> Bro, these are super powered systems, yeah. right? I think Switch wants to continue to keep that momentum of having these third-party uh, developers develop for their system. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. And the only way to do that is to come out with a more powerful model. Now, a whole Switch 2, I don't think that's the route to go because the Switch right now is doing so well. It's so successful. I think that they're going to come out with a pro model. Is it summer? I mean, I would be shocked if it is. And I don't think it would be winter either. I think this is more of a 2021 kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But man, I would be shocked if they come out in the summer cuz then these developers developing for the new systems have no excuse but to say, "Well, damn, Switch has a, you know, 1080 like fast ass Switch model, like we can do it. Like we can put it on there." 
Oh, um, Switch is still early in its life cycle. It came out March 3rd, 2017. Exactly, yeah. So no no reason why they will move on to the next Switch. I think they could come out. They have, they and they've done iterations. Well, they did it with the 3DS, the new 3DS, right? Which was just a, a kind of a bump up in uh, specs. And there were some games that could only run on the new 3DS. So Nintendo has done it before. I think they have the capability of doing it. With the Switch, I think it would be wise because it keeps them in the running to still be receiving these new third-party games, mm-hmm. even if it's at a lower spec. But people like the mobility of the Switch. I I think it would be wise, man. I I think, but damn, price range. What we're looking at, three fifty, four hundred for a Switch Pro. Probably gonna be four fifty, four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at four hundred. So two hundred for the light, three hundred for the regular Switch. 400 for the Switch Pro. That's a freaking new gen system right there. So, yeah, yeah man. Um, That's what I'm saying, though. Like, if they're going to put it to the point where you're going to be selling the Switch for like 400 bucks, that shit better be like at least 1080p. At, at least. least. At, at least. Because, yeah. because like, they, they need a bottom. Yeah. And maybe some, maybe not. <clears throat> you know how it's 1080? There's that. And, and, and 4K is 14. 40p what's the in between there's like an in between spec right on um, right in between 1080 and 4k i but I, I i feel like it would be in that range where it would be the top range of the system well regardless like uh, i would i would say bring out like a switch 2 um only because like only because it, it'll it'll be more um of a of a of a moment for people who are gonna be out there buying these things, these systems, uh, be like, oh, that's something new. I well, gotta the, get that. Versus, uh, what the switch, new switch, switch yeah. pro, uh, switch pro. Uh, look, if you want the highest specs, you look 300, 400 for the switch pro. Like mm. it, it'll be done to dump the switch era right now because it's so successful, and then. Release a Switch Pro summer, and then holidays, you're going up against the new consoles, but then boom, you come out with the new Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, 2, Two, whatever that yeah. they're going to call that. Damn, bro. I mean, and that's your flagship Pro. It shows off the Pro beautifully, runs at 15, whatever the fuck, the, mm-hmm. you know, 12, 20, whatever the shit is, and 60 frames per second. Like, bro, that would be, to me, ideal. Do I think it's going to work like that? No, I feel like the Pro is more kind of like a 2021 system. I think they want to ride out this year, do the Zelda at I mean, the holidays. I mean, even, even this year, we really haven't heard much from them other than like, what fucking Animal Crossing coming out. Oh, man, Animal Crossing, can't wait. Uh, but no, and then uh, another news, uh, I, I feel like they're going to have a direct early, they always do, sometime in January, maybe mm-hmm. February, to kind of give you a roadmap of this is what is coming out this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if they announce, I mean, it would be super cool if they announced a switch pro for summer, mm-hmm. but anybody who bought a light is kind of getting burned. Like, damn, this is, a... no, but the light is more of a handheld. Concept. The light is more for the little kids. And like when the families have like, switch more than pro one is going to be that thing that you put on your TV and it fucking looks nice. Yeah. For, and you could take it handheld at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it feels metallic in your hands. Metallic. I don't know. Mm. We'll see. I'm excited about it. All right. Another Nintendo news. Pokemon Direct came out on the 9th uh, showcasing Pokemon DLC. 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 Uh, Who would have guessed it? Game Freak. EA. I mean, Game Freak. Um, EA. <laughs> has, hey, you're not too far off. <laughs> has announced that a lot of content is going to be coming out this year in 2020. Two uh, separate expansion of... Uh, uh, two different DLCs. I don't like that, out. but uh, yeah, for thirty bucks each for each game, isn't it? Because the expansion is different on each one. Mm, yeah, I mean, so if you bought both Sword and Shield, then yes, yeah, you're you buying buy two. two. But if, if you bought one like me, you're just buying the you're one. You're just buying the thirty dollar one expansion pass true, for your game. True, true. Um, but yeah, for thirty dollars, you can uh, get a whole bunch of content, whole new Pokemon to catch, new areas uh, that a lot of people are pissed because it seems maybe that they held back a bunch of content to have it released in the DLC. Um, as far as my understanding is, is that these games, um, 
this is nothing new. I mean, there's always been like like incremental updates for each uh like each gen of the Pokemon series. Yeah. Uh, people were expecting like an Ultra Sword and Shield thing. But, yeah, but, exactly. But with this, with the DLC, I, I really don't have an issue with it. <clears throat> only because like, uh, it it takes away from having to buy another sixty dollar game. Like yeah, uh, exactly. I would assume it would have been. Because I mean, uh, obviously they're coming from the regular console uh, handhelds uh, from their DSs to the Switch, so they're gonna have to like change up the way they sell the Pokemon series now. Yeah, because to sell another sixty dollar game, like yeah. I don't want another Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I don't want a a Black Two, two Black White two. two. No, like I don't, I don't. That's lame. I'm all down for the DLC. I wish they probably wouldn't have held so many Pokemon back for the yeah, DLC. Yeah, I think they're adding like 200 Pokemon. Yeah, so but that but those Pokemon are also going to be available to the people who just got regular Sword and Shield too. Yeah, like you could trade them. And then also through Pokemon Home, that oh, uh, yeah, they're th- another service that, that they yeah. announced that it's gonna, you're going to be able to carry your Pokemon to the next game, transfer them. Uh, so because of that, even if you don't buy the new expansions, if the new 200 Pokemon are, are some that you have on Pokemon Home, you can transfer it over to your game. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways for you to obtain these Pokemon. Uh, it's not just locked behind a paywall, but I can understand why people are frustrated. I'm hyped for it because it's more Pokemon. I, I love this game. Uh, um, for, for me, I don't, I, like, again, I, it's DLC, whatever. I mean, honestly, I remember the times where, where DLC was less of a common thing. And, like, I remember being like, man, I wish to, like, they released DLC for this game, but then for this one, like, man, I would love to play more of it. And now it's, like, super saturated where it's everywhere. And, like, but now it feels more of they're taking stuff out of the game, a la Bungie, Activision, yeah. and all that, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. making you pay for it later. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Like, that's, that's where it gets me aggravated with, like, the DLC. Like, give me a full game. Give me everything that you were going to intentionally put in there. And then anything extra is that so extra. It's a it's a thing. It's like they could have included. I feel like they could have included all this stuff in the game, but now we're getting this game and not in twenty nineteen. We're getting this game in twenty twenty holiday. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, okay, I you know, would you rather wait years more for they could include everything that you want? Or would you rather get the game now and then they could just add stuff to it and you can decide whether you want to pay for it or not? Um, I, I mean, I get it both ways. I mean, but you know, either way, Pokemon was going to release either a third version or DLC. And I'm, I'm rather they go the DLC. Route. Uh, the expansion pass is $30. Does that include both parts? The yes. Isle armor and the crown tundra. Correct. Okay. Cause we're getting the Isle of armor is going to be June, 2020. Mm-hmm. And then the crown tundra is going to be fall 2020. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, Thirty dollars gets you the whole year. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do this again in 2021. A whole other expansion pass with new content. Yeah. Why, you know, going to a new Pokemon game where you could just continue to add DLC uh, yeah. and add all the Pokemon that you couldn't add in these uh, expansion passes. Add them in the other one. So I don't know. I like it. Uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah. Um, it's more Pokemon. Uh, more Pokemon Sword uh, Shield. Uh, you got Shield. Yeah, I got shield. All right, if I ever get a switch, I'm getting a sword. But, um, uh, but yeah, man, I'm excited. I I want to see what they do with this uh, expansion stuff, and it looks like they're they're uh kind of honing in on the co-op part of it. Where, okay, the co-op right now is in the wild area, and it's not that great to be honest. Uh, but it looks like they're doubling down on that, and they're they're taking all the criticism and they're putting. So now we're really gonna be able to explore. Like these islands that are kind of fully open mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. Uh, instead of just a wild area, it's the whole expansions are open world, and you could kind of co-op it through it the whole way, and I mm-hmm. think that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, it. Let us know if you hate it. <laughs> uh, well, it's funny that you say that because I actually did post that on my Discord channel. I was like, hey, uh, this is guy named Joker on there. He, I was like, hey, look, they're they're releasing like 200 Pokemon for your for Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield because he was really upset about, like, he has the, the Pokemon Bank thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the home and whatnot. I don't know how it works, but he has, like, all, a shit ton of Pokemon that he wanted to, like, import into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, he's like, no, 
fuck that. They're EA now. They're just taking out everything, making us pay for everything. Like I have, I have all the Pokemon. Like I want to play them, but it's true too. Cause there was also the, the, they were saying that they're like, Oh, like it takes us a too like super, super long to develop the, the Pokemon in each game and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, no, he's like, see, they, they're just adding 200 out of nowhere. Like, come on, man, we're not stupid. They're just doing this on purpose for more money. I'm like, well, yeah, but at the same time, like you wouldn't want to like it, an oversaturated game either with a shit ton of Pokemon. And then you're like, fuck, man. Like, Actually, they do. But uh, they do. Uh, yeah. People want everything in there at once. But I um, they I get say what that, but they 100 percent. They don't. I, I get what he's saying. I mean, I understand, uh, you know, you wanted they it, they did hold stuff back for the DLC. Obviously. I mm-hmm. mean, they did now. Like I said, they could have included it, and we could have gotten the game much more later. I'm fine with it. I mean, these guys are their first time working out a home console, really. Uh, so I, I understand their development time takes a long ass time. Yeah. Um, but I have no qualms with it. Uh, but I can understand where someone does. Xbox. Um, was it Phil Spencer who said this? Uh, let me read, catch up on this. Uh, no, it was not. Okay. So, uh, some uh, reps from Xbox had said. It was Matt Booty. Oh, he's their, uh. Head of Microsoft's internal development teams at Xbox Game Studios. This guy's solid. I I believe he came from, uh, uh, somewhere else. I forget where. Maybe Nintendo. But anyways. Um, Xbox One X has. You know, Matt Booty has announced that uh, going for like for the first couple of years, yeah, I think it's like there will be year, no console exclusive yeah. to the Xbox Series, Series X. X. So that meaning that uh, any releases in the year, first year or so, I believe is this quote, um, will also be available on the Xbox One X. Yeah, so well, Xbox don't... One, yeah, Xbox One, yes. So. You don't necessarily have to like, you know, you're not going to be locked away from their initial first party releases. Uh, you know, you'll still be able to buy them. But then going in, I uh, may he said like a year or so after, um, you will start seeing the exclusives be only Xbox Series X yeah. exclusives. So I think that's pretty cool, man. I think uh, Xbox has been pull- uh, doing all the right stuff uh, as far as like, you know, trying to gain the favor of gamers back after their horrendous release of the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think they've been taking all the right, right steps. Game Pass, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, everything they've been doing with the PC community. So, yeah, I feel like this is another one, another example of them saying, hey, you know, even if you don't buy in immediately, you're still going to be able to play our new games. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And also, if you have Game Pass... Uh, uh, all the first party games that they have will come to Game Pass yeah. d- day of release on Xbox One and Xbox Series X. So it, it's it's awesome. Like the new Halo is coming out, you have it both on both yeah, consoles. Yeah, that's super cool. No, and uh, you know, and a lot of people say this is why Xbox might not succeed because PlayStation right away is gonna have exclusives. I assume. Now they haven't said either way, or but I assume these guys are not gonna allow. Their new games coming out for the PS5 to be ported to the PS4. Mm-hmm. Maybe they will. That would be surprising, uh, but I doubt it. Um, and, it, you know, usually it takes developers years in anyways to really take advantage of a system. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that, you know, these initial releases, you know, we don't really know the full capabilities of the Series, series X. I'm talking as developers, and so they they might not have such a problem porting it to the prior system. But once they start really taking advantage of everything a Series X can do, yeah. that's when it's more difficult to drop it down to the prior console, and it makes no sense. So they might just make it exclusive. Right. Um, that's why you see the best games, uh, tech wise, come out in the latter part of a of, yeah. a, of a console. Yeah, uh, that's true. Repeat that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, of a console, uh, uh, you know, generation. So, and we're we're about to see that in 2020. I think we're about to see like some of the best games come out for e- each console. Um, and yeah, so I think this is this is great by Xbox. Uh, Phil Spencer's 
doing all the right steps and announcing this beforehand just to let the players know, hey, this is how this is going to work. I'm really excited for E3. I wonder what they're going to be doing. Ooh. I wonder if Sony's going to come back. Because oh, we, we didn't hear anything from yeah, Sony. Yeah, you're right. All, last all year last they year. weren't even there. Uh, so, no, they. W- I feel like they have to. I mean, this is a console, new console generation coming up. They have to put their f- best foot forward. Uh, you know, yes, you did great with the PS4. That's great and all. But now, you know, just as, you know, they flubbed with the PS3 at first, mm-hmm. right? They had a terrible release uh, plan. Uh, and uh, luckily to their benefit, Xbox had a terrible release plan on this last generation. So yeah. that helped the PS4 greatly. So, yeah, man, this just, uh, we'll see. Console Wars are starting back up again. Nintendo might put their hat in the ring as well. We'll see. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good year, 2020. All right. Fuck 2020, though. Uh, so that has been the show. We are going to go into our final segment of the show, Final Punches. This is the segment where we just get to say what's on our minds <laughs> and just put it out there, right? At the end when no one's watching. So, All right, what's the final punch? Uh, my final punch is Nintendo. You got to... Look, man, I love you guys. You're right here in my heart and my soul, man. You raised me. You guys got to put out this new system, man. You got to. Because people are going to start talking shit. Oh, low specs. Oh, frame rates. You know, that's going to be the talk of the town 2020, right? <laughs> One, you know, uncapped frame rates, uh, 4K visuals, 8K, you know, capabilities, like, you know, uh, uh, ray tracing. We, you know, we, Nintendo, we Al- got to like. Alienware's coming for you. We got a, yeah, Alienware, we got a whole other company coming for our same uh, concept. You got to put something out there to shut everybody up and say, all right, you want specs, motherfuckers? Oh. You want specs? Yes, daddy. Here it is. <laughs> and shut everybody up. All these third-party developers are going to be like, oh, we got to develop for we this. We got to do it. We got to do it, you know? Uh, yeah, so come on, Nintendo. This is it. This is your year. You can finally beat everybody. Because you're going to be at 37 million consoles already, adding more, and these guys are going to be catching up. Yeah. So uh, this is it, Nintendo. We can win it. We can win the console wars. Oh, my God. Nintendo is going to be the last one standing, baby. All right. Pokemon. Animal Cross. Okay. Zelda. All right. Come on. I get That's it. That's been my final punch. You got it, any? I'm um, ready for 2021. Oh my God! Are you fucking kidding me, bro? We it start. We started off the year. We're going probably going to war. Australia's on fire. People are, are, yeah, are like a lot of people are like passing away. Like this shit. Might be it. Shit, this is might be the last year, right? shit is bananas, man. As long as I get my PS5, man, oh, in my, my hands, the, right. the, we can whatever. All right. As long as we have my PS5 and we still have electricity, I'm good. All right, guys, that's been our show. That's uh, episode 21 of season two. Thank you guys for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, help us out here. Uh, you can see, you can catch us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Spotify, all your po- podcast services. Please tell your family about us. Let them know. Ooh. We're here every day, uh, every day. Check out our uh, hump day show every Wednesday on YouTube. Uh, we're gonna be streaming Pokemon. Pokemon, you know, so Pokemon hype. You hype know, everybody's train. hyped about the season pass. Well, I'm gonna get up in there too. All uh, up in there. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I am Public Enemy 59. That is JRX4X. Thank you guys. Peace. Yeah, bye.